you know, right now, one of the things that the Holy Spirit had said to me this morning was the area that I am rescuing. I'm doing a great rescue. I'm doing a great, uh, a great move of a rescue. And, and where there's rescue, there's revival. Amen. And, and in this, there's an area where he's not only rescuing, but he's resetting the hearts. There's got to reset so that there can be a, a reposition. You know, there's something that happens, you know, like, and I saw this computer. And I know that when my computer gets slow, I always want to, um, anyways. It, you know, it's the same thing with my phone. It's supposed to be so smart, but it's probably the stupidest thing in the world. <laughs> Not that there's some kind of operator here, okay? <laughs> but praise God. And, uh, but when this, so it's, it's uh, the computer starts to get whatever, goofy and, contaminated and so what you have to do is you got to shut it down so you can reboot and that's what God is doing in areas he's rebooting is everybody with me he's rebooting and in and, and this reboot that he's doing he's bringing new fresh things because if you ever notice that sometimes when you reboot, you lose everything. Now, I, I leave my computer on and, I, and they go in there and, they, and this company comes in and shuts down everything and rechecks everything and whatever. And sometimes I can't stand it because I want everything up, left up so I don't have to look for it again. Then I'm like, man, what was it? I was working on something. What happened to it? So they automatically reboot. But I don't. I reboot in the spirit. They can reboot in the kernel. So in this reboot that God is doing, there's that place that he's not only releasing, but he's bringing a refresh. And in this refresh, that's going to bring more vision. In other words, we're going to see clearer, hear clearer. We won't be anxious. what he's trying to do is get us again to that third level of commitment. A third level of commitment is vitally important because we need that level of commitment. Commitment to him, commitment to his plan, commitment. That's where we're no, it's no longer we that live but him that lives. And it's not by might, but not by power, but by his spirit, only by the spirit of the living God. That's why he's saying, make sure that you are filled with me. His spirit, it's called the holy breath of God. Staying filled with the spirit is essential. Would you turn to the book of Revelation, chapter 2? So there is a spiritual reboot going on. To those who are willing. See, there's got to be a willing heart. God is looking for the hungry. The hungry. Even when his presence comes and you feel that refreshing, and it's like, whoa, glory. Thank you. You still want more. You still want more. You know, like when you go to the beach and you're hot and you see that fresh water and you're going, ah, oh, and you're going towards it. Most people just don't go, well, you know, they run towards the water. I know I run and dive in head first. I make sure it's not shallow enough. I've made that mistake enough times. But you're just running right into the water. And that's what the Lord is saying. See, some people worship still on the beach. They're beach worshipers. They're waiting for the water to come to them. And you ain't going to happen, man. You got to get in the water. So that determines then how zealous you are. See, you don't worship, oh, Lord bless me. Man, you go after him with all of your heart. 
You make yourself worship. If you have to take your flesh by the throat and throw it in the presence of God, you do it. You go after him. He's looking for those. Look, didn't the Bible say they, that they saw how Jesus was zealous for the house of God? We must be zealous for his presence. I didn't ask you how you felt. See, too many people make emotional decisions. They allow their emotion to determine what they're going to do. Wrong. You allow truth to dictate your decision. That's that. If you let anything else, and you open, what you do then is you let yourself be open to the enemy. Make no place for the devil. Amen. Be zealous. Go after him. In Revelation 2, in verse 1, would you read it with me? To the angel of the church of Ephesus write, These things says he who holds the seven stars in his right hand, who walks in the midst of the seven golden lampstands. I know your works, your labor, your patience, and that you cannot bear those who are evil. And you have tested those who say they are apostles and are not, and have found them liars. And you have persevered and have patience and have labored for my name's sake and have not become weary. Well, that sounds like a great church. Nevertheless, I have this against you, that you have left your first love. See, you can do all of the works and do all the things that are right, but leave your first love and not even know it. Because what you've done, what happens is the enemy likes to exchange our first love. So the next thing we know, we're more excited about work. We're more excited about our paycheck. We're more excited about going and feeding and clothing. We're more excited about than his presence. When his presence, when his presence is exchanged for anything else of excitement, that's a sure sign of a continue, or, or, or a trap of a disconnect. Does everybody got it? See, you can come and worship God, but really not only with your mouth and your mind and not your heart. See, you can do the forms. You can dance. You can do all that. But if it's not out of the heart, then it's not out of the spirit. Then you're staying in the same place. Because it must be a hard change. Some people just, some people haven't changed at all. In fact, some people are going backwards instead of forwards. Because they have knowledge. And they believe that the knowledge is going to rescue them. And I'm not saying that the knowledge isn't going to assist them. But knowledge should always, the knowledge of God should always make us thirst and hungry for his presence. Not remove us from his presence. So you got to search yourself out and find out what is my most excitement. If it isn't the presence of God, something ain't right. Does everybody get it? Something's not right then if it's not his presence. Now, I love to see his presence move. I love to see what God does. Amen? You know, before we even opened a story yesterday... I, I said, we're not opening the store until we put a sign up that says, to God be the glory. That door would have stayed shut until that sign got up. Why? Because it's for God. See, when you labor onto the Lord, it's totally different. But when you labor onto you, you buck and complain about every stinking thing with money. Amen. Then you labor on yourself then you're living a secular Christianity instead of a spirit-filled. It's different. And we lose our first love. Our first love is his presence. Has everybody got that? That's his presence. That's our first love. Some of us have never even reached it. We must reach that place and then maintain it. Is everybody okay? Okay. Now look at this. In verse 5, he said this. Remember, therefore, from where you have fallen. 
Well, he just called that everyone in there a good church, didn't he? All of their works were good. Everything they were doing was good. But the problem is, is their heart had left the presence of God. And it got exchanged for works, knowledge, and all the other things. Again, what's your most excitement? That's where your heart is. Remember, therefore, from where you have fallen and what? Repent and do the first works, or else I will come to you quickly and remove your lampstand from its place unless you repent. But this you have, that you hate the deeds of the Nicolaitans, which I also hate. These are a, a, a group. They, were, they used to be followers of Christ, and then they became secular. And they, got, they, began, they started following, they're, they're carnal Christians. They followed the secular world of self-indulgence and sexual immoralities and all the other stuff of the world. Money became their God. In verse 7, he who has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says to the churches. To him who overcomes, I will give to eat from the tree of life, which is in the midst of the paradise of God. So in this, we've got to begin to examine what we must search ourselves. What's your most excitement? Is it your children? Is it your spouse? Is it your job? Is it money? Is it, what is it? If it's not God's presence, then something's not right. Does everybody understand it? If it's not his presence, you've lost his first love. You've lost the first love to him. In 2 Peter chapter 2. So what occurred in this, in the church of emphasis, um, they were influenced by the Nicolaitans. And Paul rebuked them. Jesus rebuked them. Paul still was rebuking them in, uh, um, in Corinthians. He was sending them letters because they were falling. In. Actually, they were under the, the following of Balaam, or what we call Baal. In 2 Peter chapter 2, So this was a letter to the church. Does everybody understand that? So this is God's warning, isn't it? Did that letter stop? No, it's still going, isn't it? Second yeah. Peter chapter 2 and verse 12. Is everybody there? Everybody okay? Let's speak it together. He says this about them. These are like what? Natural brute beasts made to be caught and destroyed, speak evil of things they do not understand and will utterly perish in their own corruption and will receive the wages of unrighteousness as those who counted pleasure to carouse in the daytime. They are spots and blemishes, carousing in their own deception while they feast with you, having full of eyes full of what? Adultery that they cannot cease from sin, enticing unstable souls. They have a heart trained in covetous practices and are what? Accursed children. They have forsaken the right way. That means they knew the right way, didn't they? Amen? And gone, off, gone astray following the way of Balaam, the son of Barah, who loved the wages of unrighteousness. He was rebuked for his iniquity, and look at this. A dumb donkey speaking with a man's voice restrained the madness of this, of this prophet. Does everybody see this? So in this, there were followers of what we call Baal also. They became secular. Now, Baal is a fallen angel deity. Has everybody got it? It's a fallen angel. And they began to worship him. Remember, all of these false deities are fallen angels. People don't realize that they, they, they go after certain things that are, where is the influence coming from? It's coming from Satan's kingdom. It starts with a Satan, fallen angels, goes to demons, and then humans that are willing to sell their soul out. And they begin to follow these things. Remember, the enemy is always trying to bring disconnect, isn't he? God is trying to bring us to another level of victory. 
in 1 John. Or let's go to 2 Timothy chapter 3. In verse 1. Is everybody there? Let's speak it. But know this, in the last days perilous times will come. Hello. For men will be what? Lovers of themselves. We hear this over and over. Lovers of themselves. Why are they going to be lovers of themselves? Because they're going to lose the first love. That won't be their main excitement. Does everybody get this? What's your main excitement? If it isn't his presence, something ain't right. For men will be lovers of themselves, lovers of money. Here we go. Boasters, proud, blasphemers, disobedient to parents, unthankful, unholy, unloving, unforgiving, slanderers, without self-control, brutal despisers of good, traitors, headstrong, haughty, lovers of pleasure rather than lovers of God's presence. Having a form of godliness, but what? Denying its power. And from such people do what? Turn away. It says, these are a sort of those who creep into households and ministries and, and make captives of gullible men and women loaded down with sins, and they lead them away with various lusts. Always learning and never able to come to the knowledge of truth because they can't practice the truth that frees them because they do not have or maintain first love, which is God's presence. So we fight for that, don't we? We fight for that. We fight for that touch of God. And when that touch of God comes, it's like, whoa, thank you. And once you taste the goodness of the Lord, you don't want anything else. But the enemy begins to remove that taste. He begins to exchange that taste for other things. For worldly things. And a person that used to, that, that, look, at, people can say they love God. Doesn't mean they don't love God, but do you love his presence? I love God's word, but do you love his presence? See, you can love everything but himself. Does everybody get it? There's a difference. Because when you love his presence, you love him. Everybody okay? Now look at this. In verse 8. Now Janus and Jabiris resisted Moses, so, so do these also resist the truth. Men of corrupt what? Minds disapproved concerning the faith. But they will progress no further, for their folly will be manifest to all as theirs also was. But you have what? Carefully. Follow my doctrine, manner of life, purpose, faith, long-suffering, love, perseverance, persecutions, afflictions, what happened to me at Antioch, at Icam, Lystra, which persecutions I what? Endured. And out of them all the Lord did what? Delivered me. Delivered me. Delivered me. So, here's an understanding. How do we get into God's presence? Worship. 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 What does praise and worship do? Praise allows you to begin to take off yourself. Worship allows you to access the presence of the Lord because you're not worshiping Him with your mind. Even though it's coming out of your mouth, that's not your worship. That's known as the altar. But you're worshiping Him with your being of your heart. And when that begins to happen, you access his presence. You taste the goodness of the Lord. And a love affair is maintained or reestablished. Because if it's not there, then that's truly not relationship. See, we must be in the spirit. That's how we get in the spirit. So this is what we call songs of deliverance. Is everybody okay? Songs of deliverance. And that's what we're talking about today. Because until that song, God will give you a song of deliverance. There's a certain song every once in a while that hits you and goes, Pum!
own, you're free. So you sing it, but see, you're sowing. See, but the enemy don't want you to sow. He wants you to just throw some words out there. Boom, 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 boom. But when you sing with your whole heart, you touch his heart and you change. And when your heart changes, you know what happens? Emotional healing comes. Demons run. And physical healing comes. And there's a connect that you know that you've been connected. And when you know that you're connected, you don't have to do anything to prove anything. You are because he is. There's a difference. Oh, glory. <laughs> so all of what we just read right here about lovers of self and lovers of money and so forth. That, why? Because they were following Baal. And many Christians are still following Baal. They haven't really cut loose yet. 1 John chapter 2. Songs of deliverance. Hallelujah. <laughs> Glory. If you knew what I went through this morning, you just said you need to stay home in bed. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> I knew that if I could run to his presence, I would change. <laughs> and I'm changed. I'm in love with the love giver. I love his presence. Without his presence, I can do nothing. We must make it to where he's always our first love. And when you sense that drift, you need to go worship him and praise him. Amen. Amen. And, and in this is when you ask, Lord, Restore to me my first love. Restore to me my first love. Don't, don't let anything take away my first love. Don't let anything take away the love for your presence from me. Please. He loves to hear that. Amen? <laughs> Glory. First John chapter 2 and verse 1. Let's speak it. My little children, these things I write to you so that you may not sin. And if anyone sins, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ, the righteous. And he himself is a pro propitiation for our sins, and not for ours only, but also for the what? For the whole world. In other words, everybody has this opportunity. You know, this is where the devil comes in with religion. He'll do anything he can. There's so many religions out there, but there's only one that rose from the dead. Amen. The only one. It's amazing. Everyone rejects the one that rose from the dead, but they'll accept uh, Buddha and, and, and Allah and all of these other goofy deities that are false deities. And, 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 all is, and, and, and tree huggers and New Age and... And all the other, I, none of them rose from the dead. In fact, none of them will have life. They all be dead. Amen? Man, I, I love to tell that story when I went into this place. I, I went into, uh, 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 she's a seamstress. And uh, yeah, some of you remember the story. And, and so I went in there to get some stuff done. And, and she's making two cups of coffee. I'm thinking, wow, what a place. I love it. And she walks over. I think she's giving me a cup of coffee, to, you know, as a new customer or something. And she walks right by me. And she goes down, and I see this big, fat statue. And it's this Buddha thing. And she lays the coffee down, the two cups of coffee. 
I go, man, what you doing with my coffee? I'm like, <laughs> and, and she picks up two other ones and walks away. And I said, what are you doing? She goes, I'm giving Buddha coffee. I said, he didn't drink the first two. <laughs> And she was looking at me like, I said, you need Jesus, man. He don't need no coffee. You need his spirit. Amen. He didn't drink the first two. What the heck? That's foolish offerings. That's offerings to demons and false deities. People are thinking, that. man, I've gone to uh, Cambodia and stuff, and I see all these people put, they put flowers and shrines, and you go to India, and people won't even kill a cow. They'd rather starve to death. These are all lies of Satan. All these are lies of Satan. False deities that are all over the place. From Satan's kingdom. Pre trying to prevent people from being truly free. Because only Jesus can free. Only Jesus can truly heal. Only Jesus is going to raise us from the dead. Because he rose from the dead. All the other ones are going to hell. Hello. Praise God. All right, let's grow for it. Verse 3. Is everybody there? Now by this we know that we know him if we what? If we what? Keep his commands. Mm. If we keep his commands, he who says I know him and does not keep his commands is a what? Liar and the truth is not in him. Well, that's plain and simple then, isn't it? But whoever keeps his word, truly the love of God is perfected in him. And by this we know that we are in him. Let me tell you, you can't keep his word without his presence. You cannot keep his word without his presence. In fact, this is pretty wild because the word says something very powerful. It says, the word became flesh and dwelt among us. Why? He brought his presence. Amen? He brought his presence first, and then he released his word into this realm. Now, we know that he spoke his word to establish this realm and everything else in it. But he, he, to rescue his people, he brought his presence and then his word. Is everybody okay? Oh, praise God. In verse uh, Six, he who says he abides in him ought himself ought to walk just like him. Ought to walk just like him. Ought to walk just like him. That means in character. Amen? Ought to walk like him. Ought to think like him. Rebuke evil. Expose. Be zealous, not only for his presence, but for his house. Amen? How do you, uh, listen, God tests those who say they know him. He tests them. Go to verse 15. So there's a difference between a spirit-filled Christian because spirit-filled means you love his presence more than anything. So everybody got it. You are filled with his presence and you want to maintain his presence because you love his presence. That's your first love. You're excited about his presence. But then there's the secular who are still connected with the world. They truly haven't given their hearts up. They're more excited about everything else than God's presence. Verse 15, do not what? Love the world or the things in the world. If anyone loves the world, the love of the Father is not in him. For all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life is not of the Father, but is of the world. And the world is passing away in the lust of it, but he who does the will of God abides forever. How can you do the will of God without his presence? You can't. Verse 18. Little children, it is the last hour. How many of y'all know we're in the last days? Amen. Time is closing up. And as you have heard... That the Antichrist is coming, even now many Antichrists have come, by which we know that it is the last hour. It says that they went out from us, but they were not of us, for if they had been with us, they would have continued with us, but they went out that they might be made manifest, 
that none of them were of us. But you have a what? An anointing from the Holy One, and you know all things. This anointing is carried by the Holy Spirit. Is the eternal presence, power, and truth of God Almighty. It's His presence called the anointing. Amen? And it says, and you know all things. Wow. And you know all things. And you know all things. Does everybody see that? So without being filled with the Spirit of God, without having the first love of the presence of God, the anointing cannot have his way. Has everybody got it? The anointing can't have his way. Is everybody okay? Isaiah 59. See, many people listen to Christian music but it's outer court. The outer court music is a message. And there's nothing wrong with that. But if you live in the outer court, you ain't filled. See, they listen to outer court music all the time. That's not filling you. That's a message. That message is supposed to get you into the holy place, in the most holy place. So there's a lot of outer, outer court Christians that's why it's called contemporary. What it does is bring you temporary. Isaiah 59 and verse 16. I think that's it. Hallelujah. Is everybody there? He saw that there was no, the Lord saw that there was no man and wondered that there was no what? Intercessor. Therefore, his own arm brought salvation for him, and his own righteousness, it sustained him. For he put on what? Righteousness as a breastplate, and a helmet of salvation on his head. He put on the garments of vengeance for clothing, and was clad with zeal as a cloak. According to their deeds, according... He will repay fury to his adversaries, recompense to his enemies. The coastlands he will fully repay. So shall they fear the name of the Lord from the west and his glory from the rising of the sun. When the enemy comes like a what? Flood. The spirit of the Lord will lift up a what? Standard against him. Who will lift up the standard? The Spirit of the Lord. Do you understand why it's so important that we maintain a love for God's presence? No matter what. We must love His presence. He says, And the Redeemer will come to Zion, and those who turn from transgression in Jacob, says the Lord. Verse 21, read it with me. And as for me, says the Lord, this is my covenant with them, my Spirit who is upon you, and my words which I have put in your mouth shall not depart from your mouth, nor from the mouth of your descendants, nor from the mouth of your descendants' descendants, says the Lord, from this time and forevermore. See, there is a generation of worshipers. We are a generation of worshipers. And those who worship the Lord will worship Him in truth and in power. God looks for worshipers, doesn't He? He seeks them out. Isaiah 61. And verse 1. Would you, we're going to speak this this morning. We're going to decree this. Amen? Let's, is everybody there? The Spirit of the Lord God is upon me because the Lord has anointed me to preach good tidings to the poor. He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives, and the opening of the prison to those who are bound, to proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord and the vengeance of our God, to comfort all who mourn, to console those who mourn in Zion, to give beauty for ashes, the oil of joy for mourning, 
the garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness, that they may be called trees of righteousness, the planting of the Lord, that he may be what? That he may be glorified. Look at this. And they will what? Rebuild the old ruins. They shall raise up the former desolations. They shall repair the ruined cities, the desolations of many generations. Strangers will stand and feed your flock. The sons and the foreigners shall be your plowmen and your vine dressers. But you shall be named the priests of the Lord. They shall call you the servants of our God. You shall eat the riches of the Gentiles, but in their glory you shall boast. Instead of your shame, you shall have double honor. And instead of confusion, they shall rejoice in their portion. Therefore, in their land, they shall possess double. Everlasting joy shall be theirs. Now, is that powerful? That's for me and you. But the first thing we got to have is a love for his presence. An excitement for his presence. Staying filled with the Spirit of God. That means that God brings me and you, to a place of songs of deliverance. That's why when those words come up on there, don't read them, speak them. Amen? You got to sow your way out. Freedom is established by sowing. Amen? Oh, glory. That's spiritual reboot. Songs of deliverance. Psalm 32. But you got to do it with your heart. Not just... That's the place you show emotion to him. Psalm 32. Is everybody there? We're going to read this one together too, okay? Blessed is he whose transgression is forgiven, whose sin is covered. Blessed is a man to whom the Lord does not impute iniquity. And to his spirit there's no deceit. When I kept silent, my bones grew old, through my groaning all the day long. For day and night your hand was heavy upon me. My vitality was turned into drought of summer. I acknowledge my sin to you, and my iniquity I have not hidden. I said, I will confess my transgressions to the Lord. You forgave the iniquity of my sin. Why? Because when you repent, you re reconnect. Amen. For this cause, everyone who is godly shall what? Pray to you in a time when you may be what? Found. Surely in the flood of great waters, they shall not come near him. You are my hiding place. You shall preserve me from trouble. You shall surround me with songs of deliverance. I will instruct you and teach you in a way you should go. Why? Because when, you're, when the songs of deliverance come, when you're in God's presence, you hear better. Amen. You have better clarity and sight and hearing. I will instruct you and teach you in the way you should go. I will guide you with my eye. Do not be like the horse or like the mule, which have no understanding, which must be harnessed with bit and bridle, else they will not come near you. Many sorrows will be to the wicked, but he who trusts in the Lord, mercy shall surround him. Be glad in the Lord and rejoice, you righteous, and shout for joy, all you upright in heart. All powerful. Second Chronicles chapter 20. Second Chronicles chapter 20. Now, um, King Jehoshaphat was king of Judah. And uh, he found out, he realized that he was being surrounded by m multiple tribes of military operations. And he was about to get destroyed. There was no way physically he could overcome. No way. He did not have enough military operation to overcome. So he gathered everyone together. He said, listen, let's seek the Lord and let's get an answer. In verse 13, it says, Now all Judah, with all their, all their little ones, their wives, and their children, stood before the Lord. 
And the Spirit of the Lord came upon Jehazel, the son of Zechariah, the son of Benaiah, the son of Jezel, the son of Manana, uh, Levite, the sons of Ashfar, in the midst of the assembly. So God brought a word of the Lord where? In the assembly. Does everybody get it? Is everybody okay? And he said, listen, all you of Judah and inhabitants of Jerusalem, and you, King Jehoshaphat, thus says the Lord to you, do not be afraid nor dismayed because of this great multitude, for the battle is not yours, but who? God's. Oh, my snapping good. <laughs> now, check this out. See, not every battle is yours. Does everybody get this? Not every battle is yours. See, so we got to discern what battle is ours and what battle is not. Amen. But if you're a first striker every morning, the rest of the day should be fellowship with the Lord. Does everybody got it? If you're a first striker. If you're not a first striker, you struggle all day long. Amen. Hello. But there is a time when there is a struggle of some sort and the Lord says, release a song of deliverance. Release a song of deliverance. Man, one day I was watching the news, and uh, uh, they, they were interviewing this woman that uh, had been robbed. And uh, she just kept, she was just praising God. Praising God. Oh, the Lord's my deliverer. I'm telling you, she was on the news, and I was just so blessed because she didn't care. They were trying to get an answer from her. They, she didn't want to say nothing. Everything she spoke about was praising the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. You didn't, I didn't die. Thank you, Jesus. You rescued I'm telling you, this woman was on fire. And they, heard, they couldn't get nothing from her. <laughs> the only thing they got from her was a song of deliverance. Amen. So everybody got, I mean, I was blown away. I loved it. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And he said, listen, man, this battle's not yours. Do not be afraid nor dismayed because this great multitude, for the battle's not yours but God. Tomorrow go down against them. They will surely come up by the ascent of Ziz, and you will find them at the end of the brook of, before the wilderness of Jeruel. You will not need to fight in this battle. What did he say? Position yourselves. Again, rescue, reset the heart, and reposition. That's what God does. He rescues. Look at when he rescued me and you, didn't he? Re it wasn't his purpose to reset our heart. And then what? Position us. The problem is if the enemy can get you out of position and you lose your first love, then their heart begins a change. And the heart must get reset. So that you can get back into position. Position yourselves and stand still and see the salvation of the Lord who is with you, O Judah of Jerusalem. Everyone say, the Lord's with me. Lord see, so many people don't think that the Lord's with them. They really don't believe it. They don't believe that the presence of God can be with you all day long. And it's not because you feel it. It's because you know it. There's a difference. I know it. I don't have to feel it. I know that I know that I know. There's a difference. See, too many people allow that emotion, that feeling to dictate. That's an emotional realm where people must step out of and start walking in the realm of the Spirit, which is truth, 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 truth. Of what he says, not what your emotions say. Truth of what he says, not what man says. Truth of what he says, not what the news say. Truth. Amen? Amen? And then put it into practice because that's how you get free. There's a lot of people that know truth and are still bound. Because they don't put it into practice. And again, you want the presence of truth. Amen? You go after his presence. That was the first thing that happened to me in my life. I was not a reader of the Bible. I asked for him. He showed up. I realized his presence was all I wanted. I didn't even want to read the Bible because I saw too many Christian hypocrites. I didn't want to be like them. I didn't want to fall in love with the Bible and lose his presence. I was afraid. 
Does everybody understand this? Did the disciples have a Bible? No, they had the presence of God. How they called the anointing. See, knowledge can puff people up. They can puff them up. And they think that because they know it all up here that they don't need God's presence. That's denying the power. Oh, position yourselves and stand still and see the salvation of the Lord who is with you. O oh, Judah and Jerusalem, do not fear nor be dismayed. Tomorrow go out against them, for the Lord is with you. He kept saying, the Lord is with you. Is the Lord with you? Amen. Amen. If, if God be for me, who can be against me? Do you believe it? Do you know it? Or do you have to feel it to believe it? Amen. And Jehoshaphat, in verse 18, bowed his head with his face to the ground, and all Judah and the inhabitants of Jerusalem bowed before the Lord and did what? Worship the Lord. Then the Levites and the children of the Korahites and all the other ites and children of the Korahites stood up to praise the Lord God of Israel with voices what? With voices what? Loud and high. Oh, they all got up and they started praising God. What were they doing? Warfare. They already started warfare. So they rose early in the morning and went out into the wilderness of Tekoa. And as they went out, Jehoshaphat stood and said, Hear me, O Jude, and all you inhabitants of Jerusalem. Believe in the Lord your God. Follow him. And you shall be what? Can you be established without following him? Oh, you'd be established by the devil. Yeah. He likes to promote people so people go, to the, go that way. But that's the reward, temporary. Believe in the Lord your God and you shall be established. Believe in his prophets and you shall prosper. When he had consulted with the people, he appointed those who should what? Sing to the Lord and who should praise the beauty of holiness as they went out before the army and were saying, praise the Lord for his mercy endures forever. I haven't seen any praise and worship team go out before our army these days. In fact, they're trying to get God out of the army. Trying to get God out of, man, I, I was blown away when they stood up and did the Pledge of Allegiance without God. Amen. It was disgusting. Can you imagine that? The Pledge of Allegiance without God. And, and under, what is it, under God in this nation, whatever. One nation under God. They skipped that now. They said one nation individually. Indivisible or whatever. But not one nation under God. It's removed from this country. So who's telling you who's running this country? Satan. All in the White House. Oh, one day people will wake up. Hopefully it's not too late. Now look at this. Are you ready? Now when they began to sing and praise, the Lord did what? set ambushes against the people of Ammon, Moab, Mount Sirah, who came against Ju Judah, and they were defeated. For the people of Ammon and Moab stood up against the inhabitants of, the, of Mount Sirah to utterly kill and destroy them. And when they had made an end of the inhabitants of Sirah, they helped to destroy what? They, they, they killed each other. God released confusion in their camp. They didn't know who they were killing. So when Judah had come to the place overlooking the wilderness, they looked toward the multitude, and there were their dead bodies falling on the earth. No one had escaped. Man, these guys were just praising and worshiping God. He delivered them. The army didn't have to lift a weapon. In fact, the praise and worship team went out before their army because it was directed by the spirit of the living God. Amen? And it says now, in verse 25, when Jehoshaphat and his people came to take away their spoil, they found among them an abundance of valuables on the dead bodies and precious jewelry, which they stripped off for themselves, more than they could carry away. And they were there three days gathering the spoil because there was so much. Oh, hallelujah. See, people have debt, all kinds of problems. The song of deliverance can free you from anything. Can free you from everything and anything if you constantly press in. 
His presence must be the most exciting thing to your life as a believer. If it's not, then he's not your first love. Amen? Is everybody okay? 1 Samuel chapter 10. Oh, glory. glory. In verse 1, let's speak it. 1 Samuel chapter 10, verse 1. It said, Then Samuel took a flask of oil and poured it on his head and kissed him and said, Is it not because the Lord is what? Anointed you commander over his inheritance. And when they had departed from me, when you have departed from me today, you will find two men of Rachel's to, uh, by Rachel's tomb in the territory of ben Benjamin at Zelza, and they will say to you, the donkeys which you went to go look for have been found, and now your father has ceased caring about the donkeys and is worrying about you, saying, what shall I do about my son? Then you shall go on forward from there and come to the Terebinth tree of Tabar. There are three men going up to God, at Bithel will meet you, one carrying three young goats, another carrying three loaves of bread, and another carrying a skin of wine. These were offerings. And they went, and they will greet you and give you two loaves of bread, which you shall receive from their hands. After that, you shall come to the hill of God where the Philistine garrison is. And it will happen when you have come there to the city that you will meet a group of what? Prophets. Coming down from... The high place with what? String instruments and tambourine and a flute and a harp before them. So they were praising and worshiping God, weren't they? They were singing the songs of deliverance. See, you're making way for the presence of God. And they will be prophesying. Verse 6, read it. Then the Spirit of the Lord will come upon you and you will prophesy with them and be turned into a another man. And let it be when these signs come to you that you do as the occasion demands, for God is with you. See, when the occasion demands, in other words, when we come together, you go after him. Lord, may cause me to love your presence more than anything. Does everybody get this? He's just waiting for someone to ask. Cause me to know you. Cause me. And you'll be turned into another man or another woman. Hello? Believe me, you won't be turned into anything else, okay? If you turn into something else, then ain't God. Amen? That's why we're seeing all of this other stuff going on. Multiple bathrooms and all the other stuff because they're worshiping something different. And they're turning into something different. Hello? In fact, they don't even know who they are. One day they're a female, the next day they're a male. They don't know what the heck they're doing. So you know what they do? Then they become both. It's sick. Because it's the wrong presence. The true presence of God, you know who you are. Now, so when the occasion demands, we come together and we go after them with all of our heart. We worship songs of deliverance. Verse 8, you shall go down before me to Gilgal, and surely I will come down to you to offer burnt offerings and make sacrifices of peace offerings. Seven days you shall wait till I come to you and show you what you should do. So it was when he turned his back to go from Samuel that God gave him another heart. And all these signs came to pass that day. So what does God do? He rescues, resets the heart, and repositions. That's what's happening right now. That's why he's releasing songs of deliverance. Songs of deliverance. Hallelujah. That's why, you know, look, you can't put on a new man until you take off the old man, right? So we're constantly taking off the old man so the new man can be established. And how's the new man established? Songs of deliverance. That's how the old man comes off. The new man comes on. Songs of deliverance. You know, some people need endurance. They quit too easy. They allow what they feel to stop. But if they're out there doing anything else, boy, they go for it. 
They make sure they get, get there in time and everything and to do the secular thing. But when it comes to gather together, nonchalant. Why? Because the presence of God, they're not excited about. It's not their first love. Hallelujah. First Peter chapter 1. First Pete chapter 1, verse 13. So do you think God chastens those? Yeah. What's he trying to do? Rescue? Reset the heart? And reposition. That's why he chastens us. That's why he corrects us. You can either run when chastened, or you can allow the chastening to reset your heart. Amen. Amen. Verse 13. Would you read it with me? Therefore what? Gird up the loins of your mind. Be sober and rest your hope fully upon the grace that is to be brought to you at the revelation of Jesus Christ as obedient children, not conforming yourselves to the former loss as in your ignorance. But as he who called you is holy, you also be holy in all of your conduct. Because it is written, be holy for I am holy. And if you call on the Father who without partiality judges according to each one's work, conduct yourselves throughout the time of your stay in fear, which is reverence, honor, and respect. And that cannot be established without God's presence. Knowing that you were not redeemed with corruptible things like silver or gold from your aimless conduct received by tradition from your fathers, but with the precious blood of Christ as of a lamb without blemish, and without spot. He indeed was foreordained before the foundation of the world, but was manifested in these last times for you, who through him believe in God, who raised him from the dead and gave him glory, so that your faith and hope is in God. Since you have purified your souls in obeying the truth through the Spirit and sincere love of the brethren, love one another fervently with a pure heart. Having been born again, not of corruptible seed, but incorruptible through the word of God, which lives and abides forever. Because all flesh is grass, and all glory of man is the flower of the grass. The grass withers, and the flower falls away. But the word of the Lord endures forever. And I'm going to close at 1 Peter 5 while we're here. In verse 6. Songs of deliverance brings what? Spiritual reboot. Verse 6, everybody there, let's speak it. Therefore, humble yourselves under the mighty hand of God that he may exalt you in due time, casting all your cares upon him for what? He cares for you. Be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary the devil walks about like a roaring lion, seeking whom he may devour. Resist him steadfast in the faith, knowing that the same sufferings are experienced by your brotherhood in the world. But may the God of all grace who called us to his eternal glory <laughs> by Christ Jesus after you have what? Suffered a while. Perfect, establish, strengthen, and what? Settle you. Settle you. Settle you where? In his presence so that nothing else is more desirable to you than his presence. Has everybody got it? Songs of deliverance. That's our weapon. That's a weapon. We have a, a teaching called Weapon of Praise. I encourage you to look in it. But that's our weapons. He brings the song to us to release. Amen? Praise God. Father, we give you all the glory, honor, and praise. We thank you for your word. We are honored and blessed for your word does not return void. I thank you for your counsel, correction, and direction today. We not only ask for your mercies and your grace, but your forgiveness of losing our first love. Restore us today, Lord. Reset our hearts and reposition us so that your presence is more exciting than anything. 
and as we prepare our hearts for communion, let it be taken in true spirit and honor to the one who rescued us so our hearts may be reset and we may be repositioned in Jesus' name. Everybody said amen.